Okay, um, hi, my name is Brian White, and I'm going to um, run through uh, installing a Mize in the Mize enclosure, in the 3D printed Mize enclosure. So here's Mize as it comes, um, minus the, the white standoff feet. I, I have already gotten rid of those, and I couldn't find them, so I couldn't put it back together to, to start the video from the right. From, the totally stock config, but anyways, aside from that, that's the way it comes. Right. So, all we do is so. Unfortunately, this video is going to jump and jerk around, and I'll be trying to doing everything with one hand, which is difficult. Apparently it's going to keep going in and out of focus. Okay. Alright. So <clears throat> here's the 3D printed case. A couple of notes about the case first. When you first get it from the printer, come on focus. Um, you have to do a little bit of cleanup. Uh, you want to get a pick and probe set, and you, this hook shape is is basically the only thing I you you need this part. So set usually comes with like several different things, but this this does the the entire job. So you want to get you want to gouge out all the rafting material left over from 3D printing that will fill up this slot. You want to get all all the corners clean it out and so it's a nice clean box shape except watch out that um, be careful to preserve the bump on the end here right there it's missing on this one the guy who printed this for me didn't know about it and so when he cleaned up the print job um, he, he thought that was just a slot and so he cleaned it out and he cleaned off the bump but there's supposed to be a bump right there that helps snap the the card reader in place. If if your guy does the same thing, don't worry about it. It's not worth rejecting the whole print job over that uh, because it still snaps in pretty firmly even without that. Because there's another there's another factor because that's a straight line and this part swings in. It ends up snapping in place just because of how that's a straight line. And and it fits so tightly um, that uh, you'll see in the end. It, it's not the end of the world. It's just something to watch out for if you get the opportunity. But if you if it happens like this, like me, where it got mostly actually, there's a little bit of that bump is still in there. It's just um, not much. So, anyways, um, you want to clean that slot out. You want to clean this slot out same way and you want to clean the on the overhang underneath the overhang of that block these two blocks right here that thing and that thing um, and also all along this edge here this is that this edge is also a slight overhang and there's a part that fits up in there so you want to scrape like like that and that's pretty much it. And yeah, once you clean that, um, and that's it. The rest of the print doesn't really have anything that comes out. You know, the rest of it comes out pretty good. All right. So first thing is just um, position that about like that. I'm focusing. All right. Take out your CF cards. One handed is not so easy. Because they don't weigh anything, so you can't just lift it up. All right, CF cards. All right, take out the CF card reader. And 
goes like this. Lights up. And basically all that happens is um, this, these uh, CF card rails, see how the, uh, that, that, that white part there is, fits right into this square tray here and the tray, that lip, traps the white part on all four sides. And that's what does 99% of the work of holding holding this in place. That's what takes all the force from like when you push a card in, that's what holds it back. So it's just that tray like that. And this card reader just drops right into that slot. Alright, and the next thing is this part, <clears throat> all this does is just holds the card reader in the in that tray. The tray does all the work, this just holds it in the tray. Um, so, just go like that. Put this side in first, swing it down, all right? And you'll see it, come on, focus. Uh, it swings over a little bit. There's a bunch of funny shapes on this. They're all, they're all to make allowance for the, for, to allow this to swing like this. Um, those two pockets, they provide the clearance for that jumper and that jumper so that the part can swing and the it doesn't knock the jumper, it doesn't uh, bang the jumpers over. And um, that funny looking, not square looking shape where that's at an angle and that's at an angle that's on purpose so that when this goes in like this it can swing like this and still and still not interfere with the card reader so basically you just go like that and just push down and push forward and it snaps right in and it's it's solid. It's, it's snapped in pretty firmly. So, and to take it out, you just pull it out. That's it. And you'll see how it snaps. And this, this is what I mean about if that bump is missing, it's not the end of the world because there's more than one way that this thing gets held in place. See how that's crooked now? It's this is sized so closely that that crookedness is also forms a sort of a snap so that when you put it in it snaps in place. There is a little bit of a bump left inside that you just can't see. It's just deep enough you can't see it but it's there. But uh that's it. And then when that's in place um it not only holds the card reader in place, but it pockets, it boxes in the channel where the card reader, where the cards go. So they uh, just provides a good slot for the card readers, cards to go in. And um, card reader is held securely in place with no glue or anything. You didn't damage it, and you can take this back off, put it right back in mice the way it was originally. No uh, damage-free towing. Can't see. No. That's it. Okay, so um, someone asked about screws before, like if they it would be a good idea to have a screw right there, but it, it's really not necessary. There's no forces acting on that to push it back out. When you push on the card, when you push a card in the card reader, it's held in place by that tray on the bottom and it keeps this thing from moving at all. There's really nothing acting on this, uh, this part. And so it's not going anywhere. And even if there was things pushing on it, it's it snaps in very securely. It's you're you're good. You don't have to worry about that. So
one less part to worry about. Okay, so now turn it around this way so that that square, that's the network. This is the power jack, VGA, and network. Uh, those go away from you. We want to take eyes like that. You got your four inch IDE extension cable. Uh, I provided, there's a link to where to get this cable um, in the readme on Thingiverse. Thing to be aware of with the cable is that um, the male end of the cable, well first off four inches is about the perfect length for it. It, it allows it to fold uh, with the just the right size with the rest of the machine. It gives you room to uh, <clears throat> to get your fingers in there to put the cable on and off and yet when you close it it folds up and doesn't take up too much room, doesn't bunch up. So but the thing that matters is uh, this connector, the male connector, it, uh, the, it matters which direction the cable is uh, oriented with the connector. So you want the cable to go away from this open notch here. The notch is a key on the connector that there's, on, there's always only one of them. And you need the cable to go away from that notch. And then the other thing is, there's an optional, sometimes if you get a cable from someone else, there's an optional extra strain relief clip that can go on these IDC connectors where, um, where the cable is folded over and there's another piece of plastic over top. You can't have that. So, if you get a cable and it has that, that extra strain relief part actually snaps off. You can, you can, you, you pry up on a part right about there and you can take off the strain relief and unfold the cable and have it like this. Um, but, uh, it's just, that's what you need to look for. So, in the link I provided, they do it the right way. So, um, anywhere else you're not really sure what you're going to get even if there's a picture because normally nobody cares so it's not something they ever say in the description so you really don't know what you're going to get until you get it All right. pretty simple mail in goes in the mice now you take the mice like this or in it this way with the with the network card down and you put the rack the back end Start laying the back end down first. And um, I should back up a little so you can see more. Get this. Uh, be careful putting this part on. This connector is wider than the connector it's going into. See how much I can move it left and right? That's a whole set of pins. That's a whole pair of pins off that it's possible. So you want to visually make sure you've got that centered right on both sides, then put it home. All right, that's all there is to that. It takes me 50 times longer to talk about it than it does to do it. All right, poke the cable towards the back so it folds that way. You know, make sure so it doesn't. This one-handed operation is annoying. Uh, it might it might try to do that. You don't want it to do that. You want it to pull, you know, push it so it folds the other way, like that. And you put the back end in first because the network card needs to hinge into its pocket. So you put you go like that. And what's happening over here is watch the network card. Just drops right in like that. Okay. And then that's it. So at that point, it's resting on all four posts. I keep going too close, I'm sorry. It's hard to do this. Alright, now it's resting on all four posts. Now you want your um, base plate. And the base plate see here the screw posts that um, the screws are closer to the back than they are to the front. They're not centered in all four directions. 
They're centered left and right, they're not centered front to back. Same thing with the base plate. And those bumps are spacers for the inside, they're not feet, so they go inside like this. And I forgot one step. Uh, after you take the white, you have to take the white feet off of the board. One other thing you might have to do is reverse the direction of the screw holding the power regulator heat sink on. So you want it like this with the head with the head on the bottom and the screw poking up. Uh, it might come the other way. So normally you don't care. In this case, you want you don't want anything. There's only a little bit of room on the bottom here. So you put the head the other way. That that guarantees that nothing here can be any taller than like about an eighth of an inch or a tenth of an inch, because all the screw all the solder legs are short. So. Um, my board also had screws for the joystick port. Uh, Peter tells me he doesn't do that anymore. They're all soldered. So this is probably the only screw you're going to have to worry about. So, and, and I also replaced my screw with uh, stainless steel ones because I just wanted stainless steel. But, uh, so, we got that. And the reason I brought that up is because that space for that bump that's how much room there is so with the screw reversed that's all the room you need because all the solder legs are short there's nothing else so basically that's it you put that down and then you want number eight by three quarter come on focus uh, machine screw or wood screw so I happen to like stainless steel you know machine screw just because I wanted stainless steel because I don't care if they're magnetic and uh, number eight uh, exactly fills up the drill holes in the circuit board on the Mize which helps locate the board uh, makes everything line up perfectly because there's no room for it to move around. So this board, <clears throat> this in, this case, this enclosure has already been um, assembled and disassembled several times, so these screws are going in very easily. When you do it the first time, they're going to go in much more difficult, much more uh, stiff. You probably want to you probably want to um, um, good grief camera problems so um, probably want to um, the first time you do this um, go in a little bit back out a little bit go in a little bit back out a little bit and and go like that. Go back and forth and back and forth and gradually work your way in to um, to where the to where the threads in. Um, if you just try to go in straight all in one shot, uh, you might snap the screw post. It should be strong enough. Um, if it does break, uh, depending on what material you printed in. If you printed with uh, ABS. Uh, it's very easy to repair. You just put a couple drops of acetone on there and it welds the plastic back together. Uh, basically the same as before it broke. But um, uh, it's better if you just don't break it. After the screw threads are cut in, uh, then there's no more problem. You don't have to worry about strength anymore because it's uh, there's no more, there's really no strain put on these parts. So putting the screw in the first time is basically the hardest, you know, the most stress that's ever put on it. So if you just take some care that first time, you don't have to worry about it anymore. So, right. Sorry, these are so up close because I'm having to hold the thing with my hand and the hand is holding my phone. Okay, so that's 
Snap. Focus. So that's the whole thing. Nice and tidy. And um, last thing you might want is some rubber feet. I suggest putting them just to the inside of the screw holes. Um, maybe like that. Just to the inside edge, inside corner of the screw holes. That is probably, that's going to be the strongest uh, place where you can put them. Okay, that's it. Now, our readers go in nice and easy. Use the total lack of focus here. Okay. All right. So that's the alignment of the plugs. Didn't wait long enough for my uh, wireless gateway to uh, to finish syncing up. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's that. Oh, uh, just the joystick port. That's the only other. That's the final.
That's it. Enclosure.